one. Yo folks, welcome back to another video on my YouTube channel. I'm delighted to be joined by Keith Wright. Thank you ever so much for coming on the channel, Keith. Thanks very much for asking me on, Darren. I'm, I'm looking forward to a chat with you. Ah, it's no problem. Um, what were you like growing up? Uh, I, was, I was brought up in Green Dykes uh, and I stayed in, in, in a house to stay in Edinburgh. And, and all we done was played football, darling. Um, all we done, I had two brothers, an older brother and a younger brother, and a lot of older friends. And it was just football at the time. Football before school, I'd take a body school with me, um, football after school on the light nights. And it was just that's all, that's all we done it these days. It's all, and, and I think because I was playing with a lot of older players, it, it, it totally helped me. But um, so that, that was that. It was always it was always going to be um, football. I was going to be playing it, no matter what level I was going to play it. I was, it was football was it was my sport. So how did you like working at Gumley's estate agent before turning professional? Ah, uh, yeah, that, that's that's what I was hoping to go into Hibs. I, I, I trained with Hibs from 12 year old to 16. As I, they had S forums done, they were schoolboy forums. Right. Where they have you on a forum, and at the end of the like the four years, if you do well, they give you a, a, a full time contract. So, so when I left school at 16, I, because I was at Hibs for four years, I thought I was getting a, a full time contract. But I got I got the bad news just when I turned 16. To say, unfortunately, they don't think I'm, I was good enough to, to get a contract. So that's where I had to start looking in the in the other world. I thought it was going to be a, the football at 16. So uh, I went for a job at Gumley's Estate Agents in Hanover Street. And it was a, an office job, Darren, but it was great. I worked there for five years before I got full-time football with Dundee. So it was it was just like an estate agent in Edinburgh, just a lot of a lot of basic office work, but it was good. It was a good experience for me until I got I got a chance to play full time. So when did it become clear professional football was the way to go in life? Well, see, see when I was when I was growing up, Darren, I, as I said, I just played football with my brothers and my mates. But can you imagine at the local park? I stayed in Green Day. It's a local park, Darren, at Hibs, Hibs first team. Like I'm talking about when I was I was 11, 12 year old, 1971, 72. Hibs first team used to train at our local park. It was unbelievable. So so I would walk five minutes from my house. Can you imagine you in the border? Do you stay near? Do you stay near Gala Ferdinand's ground? Uh, uh, at the I'm, moment, I'm in temporary accommodation in Kelso, but I'm hoping right. to get back to Gala. But I'm just saying, if you when you were younger, if you can imagine. At Hibs used to train at Gala Gala Feridine, not the big parks behind it, the local park. Hibs mm. trained in our local park. So so I'll be used to walk five minutes for the house, and you've got all these top players that are going to watch at the weekend. They were all actually training in our local park. So that, that was a real buzz for us to, to watch some Jim O'Rourke and Pat Stanton and Jim McCaffrey in goals and John Brownlee. They were all they, they, they had they had like Corner flags as goalposts. They didn't have. They didn't have any of the, the full size goals. They were just a training. And we used to go in there and watch them. So that when I seen that, I seen all these guys training with a purple. Used to have purple boot tracks. I always remember that. And purple tracks. It's on for training. I used to think they were brilliant. The boot to stuff. That was what I was supposed, used to wear in the seventies. So 11, 12 year old. I'm watching all these guys training, getting close up to them. I'm saying that's what I want to do when I grow up. I want to be a Hibs player. Supported him anyway, but just when you see see what their life was day to day, so that that gave me the real buzz to try and to try and be a, a professional football player. What was it like being in the same team as Budgie? Oh, Budgie, Budgie was Budgie was was, was a, for a teammate. It was funny. He was so funny. He just he just done stupid things every single day, but when it's even it come to the, the training starting, Darren, he was the most serious guy on the pitch. He was brilliant. He didn't like losing goals at training. He used to shout at his defenders if they made mistakes because he hated losing goals. So just just when you seen him before the game, before the training, he was this funny guy. He used to do stupid things, and it was a good laugh, but. The, the intensity he trained at and how serious he was. And uh, so you learn from on that side of things. 
uh, and then on a match day, he was just he done his he's done his funny warm up with the handstands and the, the, every every game, no matter what the score was, Buddy would appreciate the fans. He would go around the whole ground. Sometimes when we get beat at home, the fans are raging, but Buddy would still want to appreciate that the fans supported us. So every game he would go around and and give them a round of applause. Some fans wouldn't be happy, but most of them respected that Buddy was there. Won or lose, he would go around the pitch and and, and clap the fans. Eh? That's so Budgie would do because he's not. Aye, he is. He is. He, he travelled for Newcastle every day. Never. He was always first there. He was amazing. I, actually. You told me the story about the helmet. Funny, yeah. So funny. Uh, but that, that's just that's that's Budgie. That's just what he was like every day. There was just something else happening to him. What was it like winning the League Cup back in 1991? Oh, that. See, see, when I think about when I was 11, 12 year old, watching the Hibs training, Jim Arour can patch that in and, and then thinking that you could actually go and play for Hibs. And then to that day, to play in that Cup final and, and win a Cup at Hamden with 40,000 Hibs fans here, it was just, it was unreal. It was just amazing. It happened so quick. I, I only joined Hibs three months before that, Darren. So I'm thinking, great, I've got here. But to get in a cup final so quick and then to, to take part in that team with, with all the guys, with Mickey and Gordon Hunter and Pat McGinley, just just to be involved in, in a great team to win a cup so quick was, was unbelievable. And all the, all the celebrations that went with it was, was just, just, I keep thinking about it. It's just this one of these things that you'll n- I'll never, ever forget, the memories of that day. And also... If I'm right in saying you scored in every round, I was again. It, I was. It was just one of these lucky runs that you go on. Yeah, I just joined the club, and you're just hoping that, that you can make an early impact. And I managed to score. And the the, the games were all midweek, Darren. We played this, the league games on a Saturday then, and then we played the the cup ties in midweek. So it was just like the games were coming really fast, and I, I just got in a wee a wee run of scoring. So it was it was lucky. I always say I was lucky the games come quick. I was in good form and the team were in good form. And then before you came where you are, you scored and you're in, into the final. And then I wasn't fussy about scoring in the final. I was just wanting to make sure that we won it. You, you come out the state, the, the changing rooms down and there's 40,000 Hibs fans. So the main thing in our minds was, didn't they let these guys down? Didn't they let all these supporters down? You must, you must win the cup. But the icing was on the cake when I, when I managed to score a late goal to keep, to, to keep my run going. And also probably seal the match because that was late on to win the game 2-0. Because uh, my dad was about 26 and he was at the game. Aye. Oh, your dad's the same age as me then. Aye, so he'll have all the, all the same memories, the same team that I watched. So he'll he'll, he'll probably just be uh, heroes or Pat Statton will be his hero and Jim Rooks and all that team. That, that was a brilliant team to watch. And obviously someone up. Hibs that I said that I was interviewing you know, interviewing you said that he was one of, you were one of his heroes. Ah, that's 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 nice of him. But all, all the guys around my age, that's all we'll talk about. We'll talk about that how lucky we are to watch that. They called them Tumbles Tornadoes. Has your dad told you about that? Aye. Aye. Tumbles Tornadoes. So all the guys around my age are all are all lucky to be brought up to see a, a quality Hibs team at that at that time. What obviously made you support Hibs and not another SPFL team? My dad. There was, no, there was only one, one team we were going to support, Dan. Every birthday, like, like yourself, every birthday, every Christmas, what did I get? A Hibs strip. I had two brothers. Every time we got we woke up on Christmas morning, it was excitement to get our new Hibs strip. Mm. Used to get, didn't they get all the time? But it was, it was, it was a, a birthday or a Christmas. And my dad, my dad used to take us to the games, all the home games. Didn't he go to many away games? But there was, there were my, as I say, there's three years of my dad. Um, and for an early age, it was Easter Road. Hib strips on out playing at, at, at the front of the, the house. Uh, so there was no other, no other team even mentioned. I liked, I liked, because we, we didn't have as many Sky games in that in days, Dan. So I had my Scottish team and my English team were Liverpool. So that was the, the two strips. I used to get mainly the hip strips, but my English team is Liverpool, only because Ken and Gleish played for Liverpool. Um, so that, that was that was the reason. Hibs, Hibs, 
there's always only one team in Scotland I could support. Uh, well, it's the same as me. I mean, the mounted tops that I've got in Hebs, it's unbelievable. And also my English team is Liverpool and all. Is it? Oh, that's good. Wish I'd kept all my Hibs top down. See, when you see all the guys, you go on, you go on Twitter and that, you see guys that have kept all their strips for years ago. I would love to have done that. All the book tops and uh, all the different uh, ranges of sponsors that I've had over the years. But he didn't, didn't, didn't think about keeping the strips when you're at, just when you, when you, when you finish with them, you just put them in the, in the bucket. Eh? He didn't think of it to keep them. So I wish I'd kept them all. Jeez, uh, I'm presuming you've have you kept any of the tops that you've worn yourself? Aye, see, see, even then we didn't we didn't do what to do now. We didn't the players now can can go and swap jerseys. The the kit man and that didn't allow that. Didn't they couldn't afford to. But what you, you did get to keep your cup final strip. So I've got the two hip strips that I've got in the house are my my two one one cup that we won when we beat them Fairman and then we got beat with Rangers two years later. So you get to keep your cup final strip. So that's the two the two hip strips I've got. I yeah, one, remember, one is, one. remember the Hibs tape, uh, the Hibs tape that came out. The what one? The, Hibs never die or something. Aye, the, aye, the team that wouldn't die. Aye. I, I've actually still got that tape. Aye. But obviously, aye, I need to find someone that can get a tape. It, into a DVD. Ah, there's a lot, there's a lot, of, there's a lot of shops in that, and when when everything gets back to normal again, there's, there's a few places that can do that. Now nah, they'll do that for you. No, um, best manager you've played under. Best manager, I would, I would say two, Dara. And see when you, like we spoke about when I worked in Gumleys and and I was part time at Rafe Rovers, but uh, I was really wanting to go full time, so there were two. Two managers that I, I always loved playing for it. It gave me the chance. Jockey Scott was a guy who was a great player. He went and signed me for Dundee, and he was really he was a striker, so he gave you a lot of good coaching. So he gave me a chance to play full time. So he he he's a a manager I always respect. And then Alec Moore is the one that signed me for Hibs. He's the one that like that was my that was my my main aim and my dream. So and it was also great for me to to work with. He was a top manager. Um, who I learned a lot from. So they, they're, they're the two I would say, Jockey Scott and Alec Miller. Best player you've played with? Best player. And in my career or just at Hibs or? Just in your career, it can be in at Hibs or? Who, who was your favourite Liverpool player, Dan? Of all time? The, the all the teams that your dad ever took about all the team, the players? No, really. I mean, nah. I liked obviously Steven Gerrard. Aye. Uh, no, he he's, he was quality, but uh, I spoke about him earlier. Kenny Dalglish went for Celtic to Liverpool, and and I think every every boy at my age and and girl at my age that loved football were, were Kenny Dalglish fans because he was Scottish. He, he played with Scotland, uh, and he went didn't he to Liverpool, and he done brilliant at Liverpool. So Kenny Dalglish actually got played as a guest one game for Hibs. Alan Sneddon was a player. Who was at Celtic with Kenny, and he come. Alan said he was at Hibs for ten years, and he got a testimonial. And Kenny Dalglish got to guest as for one game with Hibs, so he he came and played for Hibs in the Hibs strip, and and I played up front with him. So for, for being one of my idols, watching him in Liverpool, and then he played with Hibs. So me, me and him played together, and um, and he was brilliant, just brilliant to play alongside, and that. So that was that, and then and then the the player who I've loved playing alongside and. He's a great player and he's had a great career. It's Darren Jackson. Always rated him. Always just his his touch and uh, his movement, some of his finishes. So Darren Darren was a great player. I'm actually named after Darren Jackson. Is that right? Because that my right? dad said to uh, a biological mother, whoever scores first, I think it was the Hibs against Celtic game. Right. And obviously Darren Jackson must have scored first. Uh, aye, aye. You, you need to get Darren on. Darren, oh, Darren. I would love to. Aye, Darren, Darren would be, he's got a few good stories, but he'll be, he'll be delighted to, to hear that. He's named, you're named after him. 
Um, but no, he's he's a great player. Uh, toughest player you've played with? Toughest player. Oh, sorry, best player you've played against. Best player I've played against? Uh, probably... Um, played against... Ra- the Rangers were a really good team at, and when I was at Hibstar. Rangers were a really good team. And they had two or three... The, the England the England clubs were all banned for Europe in the early 90s because of crowd trouble. So Rangers started signing all the top English players. So... We, we had the English players in our league, but um, Gaza, Gaza was playing for Rangers in, in the, the early 90s, and he was quality. He's one of the best midfielders. And no, I wasn't there directly against him, but just when, when you see the type of player he was and uh, the career that he had, he was he was one of the top players in Scotland at that time. So I, w- I would say I, I enjoyed enjoyed watching him play. And I didn't enjoy when he used to beat us, but I enjoyed enjoyed. The, the likes of Gaza and there was a, a guy called Brian Loudrop um, Ali McCoy up front was a good great goal scorer for Scotland and, and Rangers so that, that team was, was probably a, and that's the team that we we'll know that exactly that team but a lot of these guys were playing the, in the school cup when we beat them as well so but they were they were a top team Toughest player you've played with Toughest Um. Again, you'll not remember all these names I'm saying. Your dad, your dad don't know them. Your dad don't know them. But there's another guy, the toughest player at that time, probably two. Gordon Hunter. Gordon Hunter was he was he was hard. He didn't. He wouldn't. I wouldn't say he loved training, but he just he just trained how he played. He he was taking a, taking a passengers uh, and his team, and then you know, if he didn't if he didn't if he played against them in training, he didn't have back even if it was a Friday. He would still be the same with his tackles. He was really hard. Another another player that was signed was Andy Mullen, who who was you wouldn't think he was a nice lad off the park, but he was absolutely mental in the park, even at training. And um, he would just go right through you. He's just a winner, just wanted to win. And, and sometimes his challenges were over the top, but he just I mean, Jeeves, that's just how they were. That's how they played the game. So they were they were good. They were good to be in your in your team on a Saturday. But you had to face them. You had to face them Monday to Friday at training. That was the hard part. Uh, you were dying by the Saturday. Ah, you need to stay clear. Okay, more. If you get a chance to pick your team, down, you always pick a two in your team. Make sure they want to tackle you. <laughs> that was the best plan. I'll pick the team today, Gaffer. Right, Jeebsy, Jeebsy, and Andy Moore. You're in my team. Got to stay on the safe side, eh? <laughs> Who are your football idols? Um, mentioned, I believe, one or two. Right, so again, again, it's that, that team that I used to watch at the Jack Kane um, training, and they were close up to them. The strikers, right? Because I was, I was always like to score goals and be a striker, and so there were two players that played in that team. Um, it was Jim Rook? Was I don't know your dad will know Jim Rook again, Dad. He'll tell you he was a great striker. You might have met Jimmy actually in, in, in years gone by at, in the Ember Suite because Jimmy would probably be at some of the games a few years ago. Yeah, the only, I only started going to the Edinburgh Suite just back in the 2019. Right, right. So Jimmy's probably not been there that recently, but Jimmy, Jimmy was a, he, he's everybody's favourite for that for this, for that 70s team for scoring goals. He was brilliant. So he, he was who you wanted to be. When you're out playing with your pals in Green Dykes where I was brought up, I was wanted to be Jimmy Rook. Number nine, scoring goals. And there was another player that came along just after that was Ali McLeod, who was another striker who, who if you're playing up front for Hibs, then, then he's your hero when you're, when you're growing up, as far as I was concerned. So they were the two idols that, that, that I looked up to and I used to look forward to going watching it on a, on a Saturday. First football in memory. Football in memory. Um, no, no, I remember when growing up, and it, and it doesn't happen now. Every year after the Scottish Cup final, no, the Scottish Cup final is the last game in the season normally, in normal times. But the week after that, Scotland always played England. And that one year it was at Hamden, and then the following year it was at Wembley. And, that, and that's my memory, looking forward to the Scotland-England game. Every year, because that's that's the old enemy. That's the team you want to beat every year. So it was a great, it was great looking forward to that. I used to go out and play 
It's a Saturday at three o'clock. So I used to go out and play Scotland England games in the street, thinking you're you're kind of at least scoring against them. And then every year I was um, trying to beat England at, at Hamden in the following year at Wembley. And that was my early memories of, of, of the international team looking forward to these games. They didn't play each other a lot now, damn, did they? So, no. so they, play, they play every year. It was brilliant. And the last time they played was, I want to say, 2017. It'd be that. I mean, about that time in the course. When Griffiths right? scored two. Aye. <coughs> Aye, that, that was it. That was three kicks. Two free kicks. Outrageous. Who Aye, was so the worst dresser? Sorry? Worst dresser. Worst dresser. <laughs> Uh, I would, I would, if you were asking anybody else in my team, I would probably be up there. I would be up there as in, at the top three anyway, worst dresser. But I'll go for. I don't think I have anybody who can slag him because he got ninety-one caps for Scotland. But Jim Layton used to get some stick for he, Jim Layton, the goalie. Used right. To, used to get some stick. <coughs> used to get some stick for his for his gear. Used to come in with jeans and and uh, tight jeans with training shoes and. Uh, Horrendous colours with T-shirts and Darren Jackson. Darren Jackson was the one he would, he would be. I'm saying, Dan, you can't slag like Jim Layton. He's got 91 caps. He goes, I can slag Jim Layton. If he's wearing if he's wearing a T-shirt like that, I can slag Jim Layton. So I used to, Jim used to get pillars. Best dress. Sorry. Best dress, sir. Uh, Tommy McIntyre, the guy that scored the other goal in the school cup final, scored the penalty. Tom was always immaculate. Uh, always, every every time you come into training, he was immaculate. Who was the hard man in the team? Uh, hard man. Probably, Jeebsy, I spoke about Jeebsy and Andy Mullen. They, they, were, they could handle their shell. Uh, Murdo, Murdo was, he was our captain, eh? So, it, Murdo would always be in for the, for the players, anything that happened on the pitch. Murdo would always be, be there to, to stick up for his team. <coughs> Pat McGinley as well. Pat McGinley was looked after his cell. Ken Pat was quiet, but made the mess with him. So I was a, we, had a, we had a good team, and a, the, the guys all looked out for each other. I wouldn't say there was anybody who was really well, looking for trouble, but if any teams wanted to, wanted to come in and, and fight with us on the pitch, no, no fight, but I mean, have a, a hard game with us. There were a few guys that were up for up for the battles on the pitch, so it was a, for that for that team it was wasn't a soft touch. Eh? So there was a few guys who could handle themselves. Who was the Joker? Joker only only one Joe Tortellano. You ever met Joe in the lunges, no? Joe T. No. Legend, legend for all the players. He was so funny. Uh, just he used to do. He used to do, We used to be in the changing room for about half an hour. Just having a chat and on a match day before the manager came in, and, and this guy, Joe Tottenham was our left back. He used to do, he used to kid on, and he was the manager before the manager came into the room into the, into the changing room, and he would do a different team talk every week. He would he would just slaughter all the boys. The changing room was like a long the Easter Road changing room, was just like a long changing room. So he would always start. It was the changing room was always like. Jim Layton would start at the bottom and it would just be number one right through to the subs. So he would always start every week, different, just a different type of team talk, just uh, go around all the players and, you know, and just slaughter them. But the, lad, the lads loved it. Just, he just done it for a laugh. and uh, just He was just at training, he was always up for a laugh. And until the training started, he was, a good, he was a good trainer and a good player, but just one of these happy-go-lucky guys that was always, always had a smile on his face. What was it like scoring a scoring against Dun Fermlin in nineteen ninety one League Cup final? Yeah, that because it it was a uh, it was only one 0 and Dun were were um, were pressing towards the end of the game. Dan, it was like the best feeling, the best feeling ever. Anyway, because it was a, it was in a cup final for Hibs, but just to, to score late um, at about five minutes to go. I think you just all the guys and the supporters realise that that's it. 
this, I don't think they're feeling can come back now. So it was, a, it was an amazing feeling, amazing feeling to score. But just the fact that uh, even we had a lot of troubles the year before, Darren, we had to try to buy him over. So to win that cup was massive for us. And then so that, that late goal just sort of I think it made everybody relax and just realise that, that the dreams come true. We've actually managed to, to, to win the cup. What was the preparation like before the game of the League Cup final? Was it like any different to any other team talk or preparation, should I say? Um, no, but we got the choice. Eh? We, uh, the manager asked us if we wanted to, to go away and prepare for it, but um, so the lads all decided that we'd just rather stay in their own bed and, and just re, um, prepare as normal. And just have a good night's sleep and hope for that. That would be the, the preparation that would win as a cup. So normally teams would go away, you're right, teams would go away at a hotel or that, but just played it low key, we just just met we met in the morning of the match and had three match meal. And 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 just that was that's the sort of the plan that we were looking for and it worked out fine for us. Best team talk you've heard. Best team talk. Uh, that's a good question. I've never been asked that before, Dan. Uh, best team talk. It would probably, it would probably be the, the school cup final. Alec, Alec Muller was, Alec Muller was, was always organised, but I just think that he, he was just so relaxed that day. I just think that, especially at half time, because we didn't play that great the first half. So before the game, just try to calm everybody down because we were hot favourites to win the cup. So that 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 could have went against us. So. Just to, to just made sure that we were, were relaxed and do our job before it. But at half time, we didn't play that great. And just one or two the messages that he gave to us about about the performance level, but also about you cannot you can't you can't leave this stadium and regret it for the rest of your life. And you've got forty thousand fans here, and and if you don't perform the second half, then you can go away here minus a cup. So just just be messages that, that he put. He gave to us that this is a massive, a massive chance for us to to win a, a one of the three major cups in Scotland. We've got them firm when we had to beat with a good team, but and it and it worked. Eh? We, we come in the second half and we're we're definitely on the front foot right away, and we got the goal um, for for the penalty. So I, I would I'd probably say that that's where he was he was probably at his best. We just come and players doing and just making us making us perform right for the final. Best celebration you've done? Darn, honestly, I'm the, I'm the most boring. You see, when I look back, when you look back, you see all the old clips, eh? And, I, and I've just I've just got the same celebration all the time. I just, I put, I was like, ah, I put my finger in the air and I just ran away. Darn, honestly. <laughs> there's, a, there's a player in England done it, Alan Shearer. Aye, yeah. he done that. <laughs> so, so, but I just, I just done that. I don't know, I don't know why. I just, I done that for early on. I just kept it up, but I got pelters over the years. The most boring celebration ever, but I was just happy to score. I'm happy to score, and I just kept it. I just kept it going the rest of my career. Best game you've watched? Best game I've watched. Uh, it must be. I'm going to go to my English team. It must be when when uh, Liverpool were three 0 down in the, the Champions League final. Steve Gerrard. Drove the team to victory. Do you remember that game? Do you remember that? I know 2004. Um, I don't know exactly. Yeah, Dan, you're probably better than me at, at the dates, but at the, when it was. Against AC Milan? Aye. Aye, aye. No, aye, because that, that, that thought that's it. Okay, and what a chance because the, the three of them went no, no way coming back and then the, the Steve Gerrard just drove the team on. That's, that's, that's probably one of his best it will be his best game ever. Um, the performance level is here to drag the rest of them uh, and come back and win it. So I, I would say that's high up there. Right. Do you think Hibs have came on road since getting relegated in the 2014-15 season? Definitely, yeah. Definitely. But, um, it's, not, it's not great. It's not great when, when Hibs over the years, at the times that there have been spells where we are they've, they've relegated to the the thought of championship now, but I think it I think it's that 
a time where all the fans, the fans, the Hibs fans are, are they're not happy at the time, but they, they definitely realise that they need to get behind the club and the team, um, and they still back the team. So I think the times at, at, at that time they, they went they went back and um, realised it's a rebuilding job, give the manager time, and let them try and bring the right players through, not just to win the Art League to, to come up, but to make sure that they're going to be a force when they, when they do go up. So I think that that was the sort of case then, and um, and it just gives everybody a, a kick up the backside to, to, to know, know to get for granted that you're always going to be in the top league back then. And a couple of years later, we won the cup, Darnay, so that, that turns around again. What's your thoughts on the current Hibs team at the moment? I've not, I've not seen a lot of the games. I've seen, I've seen like on Hibs TV, uh, maybe three or four, but I've, I've been really impressed with, with the, the quality in the, in the team now to create chances and score goals. I like since Joe Newell went in the middle of the park, um, I think he's been a different player. Lee Boyle, Lee Boyle has been, been in a wide area, but he's even gone through the middle. He's looking the part now. Um, he's got a choice of partners up front with, with Doidge or and young Nisbet's done brilliant since he since he's came to the club. He's he's at the team now, but he's he's going to come back, recharge his batteries. And um, they've been steady at the back. Big Port, I like I like Ryan Poch is a great player and he's got it's a learning curve for him now. I think he's going to be a top player. See if he stays at Hibs, then I think he could be the Hibs captain for years to come. But he might he might move on, but he he's he's got all the attributes and he'll be watching Darren McGregor now and he'll be learning from him. Um, Hamlin's been steady. Um, Jackson Irvin is coming to the team and he looks like he's going to be a good addition. Um, McGinn's slotted in it in the right hand side of defence. So I, I think there's a lot of creativity in midfield. I think with Nisbet and Boyle and Doidge, um, Josh Doig has been a revelation at coming in at left back, learning for Louis Stevenson. He's going to be a top player if I hope we can keep him for a few years. So I think I think it's a lot of a lot of good things happening. I think in third place in the league, Dan, I must be happy with that. I am. I mean, I take. I mean, we obviously Aberdeen dropping points, and that's on a good spell. Uh, winning, it's always good. What's your thoughts on Lewis Stevenson? Brilliant, brilliant. Off the pitch, what a guy. To, to see, for, see when, you, when you're at a club and you can get your game for, uh, I don't know, how many how many years have you been there? 16 years? He's been there. Mm-hmm. Is that? And, and all the different managers that still select you for the first team. Normally normally you would you would have two or three managers and then somebody would come in and maybe think you're no, you're no for them. But the fact that he, his attitude and desire and his training... And his performances, he's he's made sure everybody, any manager that's coming at him over years, he's he's been playing or playing most of the time. But you hear that many stories about him that he's first on the training pitch and he's 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 willing to help the young players. And he's just been a great role model. And, and Josh Doig is definitely he's learned for, for Louis over the last couple of years or year and a half. Uh, and Louis sometimes steps in because Josh went out the team for a for a couple of weeks and Louis stepped in and done the business and then he's back out and let, let Doig go in and, and like he did on Saturdays, he's actually scored a goal as well as, as the, his great wing play and defending. I mean, he's good at, Josh Doig, he's good at going forward. Great engine, eh? Great fitness levels getting up and down that left side. No, I thought, no, I, I don't know whether it would be a good idea. Swan just died and left mid, and having Lou left back. It, it might be, it might be an option that Jack Ross might might pick in the future. Just that they're playing with the, the wing backs in their way, so it's a it's a fair shift for for um, Josh. Josh doy has got great energy, so I think I think Louis Stevenson will like playing left back and, and getting forward for there. But when they go three at the back, I think it's 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 ideal for Josh Doig. He's a young guy, he's fitter. He can. Hmm. He can Run that whole side, but if they go four four two down, then they might they might do that. They might have Louis at left back and Josh Doig in front of him. That would be that would be some partnership, some some delivery coming in for that. I used to love left cro- crosses for the left wing down. So you're getting Louis Stevenson whipping them, and you're getting Josh Doig hitting the byline. So you're right. It, it would, if, if they go with four four two, then they might play the two together. But now they're not going to change their their, uh, their wing back 
So I think I think Josh Doig will play in that position now. Oh, yeah, and obviously if Josh gets tired, then when he comes on. Exactly, aye. aye he's, he's fit enough to come on and, and, and make an impact. Because obviously we've still got... We've still got an injury. Ah, well, he, as I said, he, he's, he's one of the fittest at the club because he's he's always first out in the pitch and he's he's trains as hard as like he did when he first came in the door. So there'll be a problem with that. And he's obviously the only player to have two 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 mate, well two cups. Legend status that, and that's what you call it. Hey, eh? when you when you win that with Hibs, then you're a legend. Well, he's my boy, he hero. Is he? Is he? Ah. Uh, Oh, that, that's brilliant. I've always, I've always, I've always liked oh, him. You can see it, but that's his training. Oh. Is that right? Aye. Brilliant. I'm liking all your hip stuff there. What's all the photos in that as well? Is that just all stuff you've picked up over the years? I well, you know when Davis played for Hibs? Who? Jakob Davis. Oh, aye. The Polish keeper. Right. I've got his Eddie Turnbull Memorial match top. Right. And obviously when I got invited into the Hibs Training Centre in 2017, uh-huh. I asked Lee for his training top, took off and signed it for me. That's a, that's a petty boy, is it? That's what we're talking about. And it's yeah. the same as when I interviewed Louie. And then... Before I interviewed Dad and McGregor, like a few months after, before like Daz was ready, uh, Louis came in and just chatted. Uh, and I think the reason that I've got into like sort of media and interview players is because not many people, like they just see them train as sort of play either weekend or midweek. They don't actually see what they're like Off behind the, the scenes. Ah, uh, I uh, know that's that's great. You've seen them like that, and and how much they've uh, they've, they've probably helped you. Eh? They'll give you confidence to go and do that. Say eh? just be letting them interview you and making you feel making you feel comfortable. Oh, so, it's yeah. like it was very when I done Louis, it felt very strange, but good. That just uh, didn't feel right. I would say what. That's your, that was your hero, your interview, and you must have been you must have been sky high up. Like, oh, what do you mean? This is my hero. When I done it, I mean it was just it was very weird, like it didn't feel real. Nah, no, yeah. But like, what's your thoughts on the 2016 Scottish Cup final? I've oh. got to chuck that one in. Oh, I've got the eye. I know. I was I was sitting beside me, Mickey Weir actually. Me, me, Mickey were were at, at the game together, and uh, just at the final whistle, we just like he was sitting right behind me, and just the two of us just worked it great because of our dads, both of our dads, like all the times that we played for Hibs, our dads were at the games, and both of our dads were, used to say to us, "When are you going to win the cup for the Hibs? When are you going to win the cup for the Hibs?" And then we, we couldn't do it, and then both of our dads, unfortunately. I passed away. They never, they never made the final. So we, me and Mickey just looked at each other, and we, we, the, the two of them will be looking down, watching this. But it was, it was like, it was just such a feeling. Uh, we were there uh, at last. Just, just seeing it all and, and the whole, the whole place, just the relief uh, and then the enjoyment. Uh, events we won the cup. It was an incredible game. I mean, when Halliday hit that goal. To make it two Burn Rangers. Here we go again, eh? I literally had the scarf on. Here we go again. But then when Stoke scored, the Rangers team just looked dead on their feet. Ah, well, that was the only one winner after that, yeah, right? Yeah, I mean, what well, the other fans done, like, obviously, when there was a pitch invasion. But uh, the, some of the fans went to go to the Rangers fans. I don't know that. Nah. It was stupid. Uh, we just, we just, I just think about the celebrations when we come back to Edinburgh. That's, that was it. That was the, 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 the day after, the night after that. Eh? Unbelievable. Well, the day after, 
Well, in the morning I woke up. I had to rewatch sports scene. <laughs> did you have a Did you have a few drinks? drinks? Yeah. What age were you? What age were you in the cup? Were you? I was about you were... eighteen, nineteen. Ah, uh, so you having a few drinks then? Celebrate. And then obviously my dad was a bit rough, so uh, I went to the balls and I went to my mates because we were going to go up. We went up and I went, should I bring my ID? And they're like, oh, we're not going to any pops. So I left my ID at home, went to Peebles, we ended up going into a pub. Uh, the guy in the bar already knew me. Right. And then when you got a car out in Edinburgh, <laughs> it was someday. Uh, well, we waited wait long enough for it down next time because they have to celebrate it. Exactly. I mean, and then the weird thing is the night before the cup final, I was at Gal Ferry Dean presentation night. Oh, I had a few that night then, and a few before it. So if you have that The next game on, and I was a wee bit fragile. <laughs> But I think when we scored the first goal, was, but there was no bookies in Southampton that day. There was no what? Bookies. Oh, right, right. And I said to my dad, all the way up, three, two herbs. Aye, right. well, that'd be a good price as well, eh? But I need bookies. All right. oh well. But do you think we'll get you up? In a great position, yeah. Four point gap, keep winning, winning four games in a row. Got Motherwell and St Johnston next two games, so no, it's definitely we're definitely in the driving seat. You just got to keep keep winning the games. Aberdeen are not in great form, so that'd be brilliant. That'd be another boost there to if if all all goes well and and fans can get back into the stadium, then a European title. Look forward to. What's your thoughts on Celtic? On Celtic. Mucking up. Oh, aye, aye. So they've not, just not been informed recently. Eh, that they've, they've, they've sort of been since Rangers sort of dominated a, a few months ago. Celtic's not really been consistent. They've had a, a couple of good results and then a couple of bad results. So I think it'll just be a, a, a rebuild job. I think they'll just need to just work really hard over the summer, get players in, and, and go again. So, how many likes on the video? Should we get Keith? When, for this? Aye. I don't know. You're the, you're the top man now. You're the one that's got all the, all the followers, darn it. Aye, but just guess. Eh, oh, I don't, I've only got a clue what, what we're talking about. What, what you've been getting before? All your big stars? Eh, way uh, Darren McGregor, I believe I've got like 170 likes or something. Aye. Aye. Nah, I've not got a clue. I've not got a clue. We'll not beat Big Dad anyway, so... Or what yeah, do you get well, with Lewis you, never, you never know. <laughs> what do uh, you get with Lewis Stevenson? Let's... Come on. Let's aim for 50 likes. Right. We'll go for that. The big 5-0. Aye. Or, or 70 likes. <laughs> well, you're getting, you're, getting me, you're getting me popular. You're getting me famous with your, with your channel, so you never know. But no, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on my channel. Hi, no, thanks for asking me. But what I'll do, once I end it here, I'll carry on chatting to your thoughts. That's, that's fine with me, Hi. Right. Thank Good. you very much. Well, Cheers. Thanks for asking me, Darren. No more.